Okay, now we're gonna go through how to start a dryer, in this case, a Sukup mix flow dryer, using our four point uh, temp sensing system. So to begin with, we're gonna go to start, and we have three options here, assisted start, manual operation, or dry fire. So dry fire is just something to use to make sure your fan and heater will run uh, before the season starts. Always encourage doing this a uh, couple, three weeks before season. That way, if there's any service that needs to be done to your dryer, you can get with your dealer and do that before everybody's starting with grain at the same time. Uh, today, we're gonna go to assisted start. And we have a load system safety warning. Um, and then we can choose whether or not we want to run our fans during initial fill or not. I do recommend that. It's nice to keep the dust and everything blown out of the system uh, while we're filling the dryer and empty dryer with grain. So I'm going to accept the warning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and load the dryer. Um, now this, this could take some time. Notice we've given it up to 45 minutes. Um, and this will be on the initial load of the dryer. So once the fill switch is sensed that it's full, um, it's going to note that it's full and tell us we can go ahead and proceed. Now this warning basically is, is reminding us that we have enabled the load system of the dryer. So anytime the fill switch senses that grain has settled and it needs more, it can turn on your load system. So just be aware of that. Even though the dryer is not running, the load system is enabled. And if grain settles down in the dryer, it might turn on, say the auger coming out of your wet bin or auger double run, whatever that's filling your dryer. So we're gonna go ahead and hit proceed. Um, now we have to choose between automatic batch mode, initial dry, or, con or continuous flow. So batch is probably not going to be used on a mixed flow dryer. This is going to be for smaller dryers that are capable of running in batch mode. Initial dry is used when we want to basically batch dry some of the grain that's in the dryer. So we have, we start with an empty dryer, we fill it all with wet grain. If we want to put some air and heat on grain before we just start discharging it, uh, then we would select initial dry. Um, otherwise, we're going to hit continuous flow, which is what we're going to do here. Now we're going to go through our different drying settings. Um, so we are going to basically run heat on all three of them. And plenum one, two, three, fan one, two, three, think of floors of the building. The first floor is the bottom one, the second floor is above first, third floor um, is above, and all Sukup dryers are set that way. Um, as far as starting points uh, to dry grain, um, you know, you might leave the bottom one at 160 and then maybe I like to, to come up um, about somewhere between 20 and 30 degrees um, on, on each one. So let's say 210 maybe and, uh, and we'll, we'll bump up uh, 25 degrees between each one, putting the hottest temperature at the top where the wettest grain is and then dropping our temps so that the, the, the lower levels have less heat. Um, the grain is, is more fragile there, uh, so, so that's what we would do there. Um, our initial grain temperature, basically whatever the, the incoming grain or the temperature of the grain is coming out of the field, whatever our moisture is, it'd be pretty common to start somewhere in the 20s usually. Our output moisture, so this is the moisture that we want coming out of the back of the dryer. Um, you know, usually somewhere between 15 and 16, depending on how much moisture you feel will be lost in the bin. If we want to put a little warm up period, we can, or we don't have to. Then we'll hit next step. And we have three different choices of the unload speed that we're gonna start with. So we can just do whatever we were previously running. If we're starting a new dryer from the beginning, this one doesn't matter. Um, our calculated speed, so this is the calculated or how fast it thinks it should be running based on all the information we just told it, or you can type in whatever speed you want. So unless I, if I, if I already have a pretty good idea, I can change it. Otherwise, I'd recommend going with the calculated speed. So I'll, I'll, I'll select proceed on that. Okay, so now it's basically saying you need to push a button before we can go forward. So I'm going to hit start stabilization. Um, at this point, you can see the fans have all started turning. New animation added in this version of software. The burners are lit. Once, the, once we see a flame there, that means it is actually sensing flame. Um, today we're working on a simulator, so you're seeing things happen a little faster than they may um, otherwise. The, the unload system is on. Okay, so now our stabilization, this is just a countdown timer. And notice we're really in manual operation. 
This countdown timer is, is basically the amount of time it takes to run a kernel of grain from the top all the way through and out of the dryer. And we basically want to stabilize the dryer um, before we make any changes to it in automatic. That's what that countdown timer is showing us. Um, if for some reason we ever wanted to make a change to our drying temperature or which fans are on or off, this is a button where the pencil is so we can select anywhere in there and we can make changes to um, fans, heaters, drying temperatures, any of that. Okay, so just a couple things to note. These, these temperatures should be a whole lot closer than this. We're using a simulator for this demonstration today and, and it's not gonna allow it to go to the right temp. Um, usually your set point, you should be within two or three degrees of your set point if it's not right on. Once the stabilization time has, has expired, um, or if for some reason you wanna fast forward that, and I would caution you, don't fast forward this unless you know for sure that's the right thing to do, but in our, in our situation today with the simulator it is. I'm gonna hit drying step info and skip stabilization. So now our stabilization has completed, or this is what it would look like once we uh, waited for that time to elapse. And now it's saying, hey, we should really calibrate the moisture sensor. So to do that, we're gonna hit calibrate sensors, um, discharge moisture, and it's gonna wait for the next cycle. Um, and we can read through this. I don't think we're gonna jump through all this right now. Um, but uh, it will tell you when to take the sample, and when you test it, it will give you five boxes to enter it in. We'd like you to test that same sample five times, enter it in there, and the touchscreen will then average it and, uh, and then give us a, a, much, a much more solid uh, moisture calibration. Once we have taken our sample and uh, it, the, the touchscreen is now comparing it to what it actually measured and we need to test our sample uh, like I say five times. So we're taking the same sample, um, running it through our tester and, and testing it five separate times. Um, you know, I, I know a number of you are going to have very high quality sensors um, and if you, I, would, I would encourage you to test it at, at least. Um, at least three or four times, and if you come up with the exact same number, um, then you can uh, you can use that. But I would you, you do need to fill in all five boxes, and the repeatability varies greatly depending on what you're using for a moisture uh, sensor to calibrate it with. Then we'll hit store calibration. Um, it's going to automatically put in our offset, and now our discharge moisture sensor should be calibrated. Once we back out to the automatic screen. Um, I will tell you it's going to take at least a minute or longer for it to, to take effect. Um, in this case, we're using a static moisture sam sampler, so it's going to show us the moisture average. So that's the last number of moisture sensor or number of samples that have been averaged together. The very last single sample, um, the grain temperature. Hopefully, it's never 300 degrees. Usually, it's going to be um, on a heat cool dryer, something between ambient and 30 degrees above ambient shows us the unload speed. Um, right now, uh, after our stabilization and calibration, we're really just running in manual mode. So our control setting is showing manual that we're running at 41% unload speed. The column temperature, this is gonna be the average of the four um, single point RTDs or four temperature sensors that are in the grain column. And right now we're averaging 101 degrees. And that, that's pretty close. Most mixed flow dryers are gonna run somewhere between 105 and 95 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, and that, that'll get you between 15 and 16% moisture coming out usually. Um, and note, this is, uh, um, this is just a simulator so that the numbers here are not, not necessarily accurate. Uh, when we are happy and ready to go to automatic, we'll just simply touch automatic and then go to automatic operation. And we have two choices. We can base our automatic operation on output moisture um, here or on column temperature here. Now, if it's a big heat cool dryer, like a mixed flow or a tower dryer, maybe even a stack dryer, and you have the four, four point temp sensors, we highly recommend running automatic based on column temperature because those sensors are up in the drying part or the heat section of the dryer. So it's real time information where the output moisture sensor is after it goes through the cool section, um, it's a much more delayed reaction um, and, and doesn't, doesn't usually work as well in heat cool dryers. So we'll hit start, and, and like I say, it's probably gonna be something close to 100 degrees. We'll hit start, automatic operation. So basically everything looks the same now, except we're in automatic here, and our control setting, instead of unload speed, is now based on temperature. So our, our set point is 100, our actual is 101, 
And what we're interested in is where does that end up getting us for moisture? The higher we set the column temperature, the lower the moisture will end up. Or if we need to, to increase the moisture coming out of the dryer, then we would uh, decrease the column temperature. So that's an inverse relationship. A couple of things, uh, you're, you're going to want to look at the graphs menu often, so graphs and column temperature. And again, this is a simulator, these aren't realistic numbers. Um, as it populates information, it will fill this all out. This window is about two hours, so you're going to have a, you're going to always see a two hour window on these graphs. The red line is your set point, the green line is what it's actually measuring, okay? So it won't look like this, um, and it won't be a pretty straight line, it'll usually be a sine wave of some kind. But what we're interested in is, does the sine wave trend to be level, horizontal? If it does, then the dryer is basically stabilized. And what we're seeing here is the average temperature um, of the grain and then the moisture we're looking, out, looking at on the touchscreen, that's gonna be um, some time later, say a half hour later, or whatever time it takes to get through the cooling screen, depending on how fast the dryer is running. So if it's more or less level, I know the dryer is basically stable and the moisture that I've got, um, it's either going to be too high or too low or acceptable and then we'll, we'll decide based on that whether to increase or decrease our column temp set point. If we have um, our sine wave increasing or decreasing, we know the dryer is really not stable yet and we shouldn't make any, any real decisions uh, until we start seeing that, uh, that, that, that trend more horizontal or, or level line at that point. The other adjustment that I want to touch on uh, when running with uh, four-point temp sensing is called a gain or a multiplier um, number. So to get to that, um, we're going to go to settings, unload settings, and reaction or gain. So under, under unload control, reaction or gain, and we're running in temperature. Um, so my personal recommendation on this is start somewhere around 100. Okay, so this is just, just a number that basically stands for how aggressive should the dryer make changes if it's not the column temperature we want it to be at. And if, if we touch that, notice we have a range up here. We can make it between 0 and 200 degrees. Most of the time, I find this number should be between 100 and 150. So if we're starting early in the season on wetter corn and the dryer is running relatively slower, then we need the reaction or the gain number to be low, or, or, or I would say start around 100. Um, later in the season, when the incoming grain might get down to 17-18% moisture and our unload speed uh, increases and the dryer is running much faster, um, then we may decide, hey, this dryer is running faster, it needs to react faster, and that's when I might need to change the gain up to 150. So to decide if I need to change that gain or not, again, I'm going to go back and I want to look at those graphs. I want to look at that unload, um, sorry, the column temperature graph that we just looked at. graphs, column temperature, and, and again, keep in mind simulator, um, but we'd like to see the green line crossing over, you know, in the space of two hours here, we'd like to see it crossing over the red line um, at least a couple of times in two hours. If, if it just never seems to move, if it seems like it's stuck, you know, and, and we're just not getting any progress or movement on that line, then we need to make the gain more aggressive. If, if it's crossing it constantly but never really calming down or bouncing below or above the line, that's an indication that our gain is too high and we need to lower it down. So, uh, so anyway, that's the thing to understand is when do we need to change the gain if we're not happy with how, how aggressive that it's making changes or when do we need to change the column temperature set point and that has to do with you know, a, a roughly level line and how, how close the uh, the moisture is to where we want it to be. If we're level, but our moisture is just off half a point, then we just need to adjust that uh, column temp set point. And remember, higher temp is low moisture, and lower temp is high.